OpenAI's GPTs are now live and the opportunities of what we can build now is absolutely ridiculous. So in today's video, that is exactly what we're going to be doing. Now, I personally see GPTs being used across almost every single business in the near future where they can have these independent virtual assistants built into their processes. Now, the good thing about GPTs is you can create them very easily and you can also tie them into Zapier that has over 6,000 different integrations into different applications. So what that gives us an opportunity to do is build out these agents that can work across different applications and we don't even need to have any developer experience or tech experience to build them. In today's video, I wanna walk you through a live build of me building a personal assistant or a business assistant that you can either take to your clients if you run an AI automation agency or you can build for your own business. We're gonna be tying this assistant into different apps so that it can send emails for us, check our calendar, it can make bookings, it can create us a to-do list, pretty much anything that we can dream up. If it's on Zapier, we can integrate into this GPT and we can build it. I will also be leaving free resources down below on this video. So if at any point you get stuck and you need to download some guides, I've collected all the useful resources that I've found online that I've been using that have helped me build this GPT and I've put them in one Word document for you so you can go and download that right now. Let's get started. Okay, so for the example of this video, I wanna to put together a GPT that is my own personal assistant. Now, whether you are an entrepreneur trying to start a business or maybe you're a business owner that has lots of complex tasks and very busy days already, or maybe you're just someone who works a nine to five who just wants a little bit more structure in their life. This is a GPT that you could use because you can program it and set it to do exactly what you want. Okay, so for us to start, what we're gonna to wanna to do first is come on over to chat GPT. We're now gonna be able to see a new option up here where we can hit explore and we can see all of the GPTs that have already been made by OpenAI. Now, some of these GPTs are sticker wizards. We have GPTs that turn images into coloring books and based on prompts, you can create coloring books. But what we wanna do is build a personal assistant. So we're gonna come up here and click create a GPT and we're gonna be taken to this builder. Now, the best thing about this is there is no need to code these bots. There is no need to program these bots. It's all done through conversation and it makes it really, really simple for us to do that. So like I said, we want an assistant that can help us build a to-do list, can check our calendar for conflicts, can potentially email people as well, and in general, just keep us on track, telling us what we need to prioritize and when we need to get things done based on deadlines. So let's do that. Now I've kept this pretty broad. I said, I want you to build me a personal assistant that can help my business track every day. The assistant, track help me track my every day the assistant will be able to help me by looking at my daily calendar and giving me a structured to-do list based on tasks i have to complete it will also be able to email my clients and help me manage my business so i'm going to punch that in here and then gpt will do its magic now i've seen a lot of tutorials going through this setup so you may have seen this before but what we're going to dive into in a quick moment is how we're going to set up our zapier integrations and actually tie in actions to this gpt so great choice. Personal assistant is tailored to your business management. Sounds incredibly useful. Let's give your GPT a name. I'm gonna call this Bobby AI. I don't know why, but let's go with it. You can see here, it's actually given me a, a name recommendation. So what's also cool about these GPTs is you can have it so that it's your own personal recommendation bot. You know, you, we could set it so it's a business name generator or it's a website copy generator or an email generator. Whatever it is, we can build it. And it takes us a matter of minutes to do so now. So look, I don't really care what the profile photo looks like. I think that's pretty good. You can come here and you can add an attachment and you can upload a logo and say, you know, work with this as the base. But for now, that's fine. It's created that in Dali and I think it looks pretty good. So it's now asking me what sort of tasks or interactions should Bobby AI emphasize or avoid in its assistance. This will help define the scope and boundaries of its capabilities. Now, with an assistant, we don't want it to be sending us long descriptive messages. We want it to be really concise and we want it to basically just deliver us bullet points of what we need to be focusing on and we need to give it clear instructions and it just needs to go and execute. So in order to do that, let's input this prompt. Bobby AI sends us clear and concise messages, helping us streamline our business processes and save time. It does not send lengthy messages that take us time to read. Everything Bobby does is efficient. Okay, understood. Bobby AI will focus on delivering clear, concise and efficient messages to help streamline business processes. Next, how would you like Bobby AI to approach the situation? that require more information or clarification? Should it ask for additional details or make assumptions based on the information available? So I said, it should do a mixture of both. If the answer is easy to find, it should take initiative. If not, it should confirm with me and ask. Again, we wanna streamline this process. We want it to be efficient. We don't wanna be wasting our time because at some point, if you've only got a couple of tasks a day, maybe isn't useful for you. This is gonna be good for people that have a lot of tasks. They have a lot of calendar events. They have a big to-do list that they need to get through. Bobby AI can then help us reshift and program our day based on that data. Got it. Bobby AI will intelligently balance between taking initiative and seeking clarification. 
Finally, let's personalize Bobby AI's interaction style. How do you like Bobby AI to communicate with you? Should it take a formal tone, a friendly approach, or something else? We don't really need to worry about that. What you can do here as well is you can actually paste in a website. So if you have a business with a certain tone of voice on the website, you can actually paste that URL into this builder and it will take the tone of voice and use that for your GPT. Now, Bobby AI is now set up to interact in a friendly and helpful manner, ensuring a pleasant and efficient experience in managing your business tasks. Would you like to try interacting with Bobby? So we can now play around with our GPT and start using it. But what I first want to do is configure this. Now, like I said, this personal assistant doesn't really work unless we have integrations built in with Zapier. So let's do that together. Now, this part is a little bit tricky, but it is pretty simple. So don't worry, there is going to be free resources down below that you can access that will be guides uh, showing you exactly step by step how to do this. But again, take it slow, rewatch this part of the video and just follow along with what I do. I am not a developer. So if I can do this, you can do this. Right now we can see the name is there. We can change the logo, we can change the description and we can also change the instructions. Now, right now this is in alpha, beta. So it's still a little bit clunky. Now I'm sure they're gonna fix this and it's gonna be a lot easier over time. But right now, this is how we are gonna get Zapier into our GPT. So Zapier has a thing called AI actions. Now what actions are is exactly what we saw in that demo on dev day. They essentially allow Zapier to integrate with these GPTs and show up in messages. So for us, what we're gonna to wanna to do is follow this step by step. So copy this special URL to your clipboard and what we're gonna do is scroll down to add actions and import the OpenAI schema. Now to do this, we literally come down to actions, we click this, import from URL, we paste into there and click import. We're gonna get a bunch of code here now that basically says, yes, you can call to Zapier and Zapier can use actions now in your GPT. So we're gonna come up back there and we're gonna come back on over to this setup page. Now, what this example has done is it basically has set rules for these different Zapier actions that we're gonna bring into our GPT. So there's rules, there's instructions, and there's required actions. Now, we don't really need to worry about this too much. You can dive into it in a little bit more detail and go over exactly what each step means. But it's basically saying that, you know, tell the user you are checking they have the Zapier AI actions needed to complete their request by calling slash list available actions to make a list. Available actions given the output, check if the required action is needed in the available actions and continue to step four if it is. If not, continue to step two. Essentially, it's set up this like custom workflow for the Zapier action inside of the GPT. So if you did wanna get technical, you can jump into this and start editing this. With these instructions, this is why it works for these GPTs to be internal because you wouldn't want it to confirm your Zapier actions and integrations with a client if they were using this GPT of yours, right? So for me, right now, they are perfect for internal agents inside of businesses or for your own personal use. And then the main thing that I wanna look at is required actions. So we have action here, Google Calendar, find event, confirmation link, there we go. Then the second action is Slack, send direct message, confirmation link. Now you don't need to worry about this too much because we're gonna be going through it together. I am gonna copy all of this into our configuration. So all you're gonna do is come to instructions, punch in a new line, and you're gonna paste it in there. So there is another step, and this is where we need to now go on over to Zapier to sort this out. And this is where we're gonna start building the different Zapier actions that we want this bot to do. So in this case, you're gonna come on over to actions.zapier.com. It's actually really hard to find this, but it is in alpha, so it's understandable. You can see here, I have ChatGPT connected, and I also have GPT. So we wanna manage our actions inside of our GPT. So you'll be able to see here that I already have a Stripe action set up, and this action essentially allows me to create a payment link just from a prompt. We also have a to-do list so we can create a task based on a prompt or the AI can create a task for us. We have find events in calendar. We have create events in calendar. And what you do inside of these individual actions, you can actually configure them. So in this case, the Google Calendar that we wanted to add was my Liam Evans media at gmail.com. Now you can add way more. You can get it so it sets a specific event with a location or visibility, reminders, all of this different stuff. But for now, let's keep it simple. Let's start with baby steps and let's start formalizing a bot that can just do a list of tasks that we can then have a base where we can build from. So like I said, we want to build a bot that has a to-do list. We want it to possibly send out payment links as well to potential clients. We also want it to be able to send emails. So I've got Google Gmail send email. That's an action that we've added in. I've also got Gmail find email. So 
we can ask the bot to scroll through our Google account to see if we've got any responses from a certain person. And we can also enable Slack as well. So if you had a team on Slack, you could send them updates through Slack from this bot too. For now, let's set up the Stripe link. Let's set up the to-do list. Let's set up the calendar configuration and let's set up the Gmail access. Now that I've added all these in, if you did need to add more, you can come to add a new action and you can basically search for any app that is already here. Maybe you work on Discord a lot. You can get it to send a Discord message. Maybe you work on Slack. You can get it to create channels, add reminders, invite users to channels. It really is endless here. So think about the possibilities of creating an onboarding bot to your business. You know, this bot, you can punch in all the details of the new client or it can read from a Google spreadsheet that you've set up or a CRM. And whenever you get a new client, it can go through, it can add them to Slack channels, it can send them a Stripe payment link, it can send them a welcome email. This really is the future and this makes it so much easier. Now you could do that with Zapier before, but you now have this customizable specific onboarding bot that you programmed inside of OpenAI's GPTs. So I've set up these actions. Let's jump back on over to GPT and let's start adding them in. You can see here the required actions for that default text that we added in was Google Calendar, find event and Slack send direct message. Now I'm actually gonna delete these because these aren't specifically what we want. If we come back on over to our actions, we can see that all I'm gonna do is come on over to one of the actions that I built. So the to-do list action, which is create a task and I'm going to copy this action URL. So we can actually just paste this in. So our action is to doist create task and our confirmation link is gonna be that. Now all we need to do is go through and do that for every other action that we've set up and then we should be able to start using them. So I'm gonna quickly do that now. Great, so I've now added all of them in. We have the to-do list, create task, Stripe, create payment link, Google Calendar, find event, Google Calendar, create event, Gmail, send email, and Gmail, find email. Perfect, those are all we need for now. Now what we can do is we can set up pre prompt So when we start using this bot every single day, we can say, what calls do I have today in my calendar? and who are they with? So the, my pre buttons are what calls do I have today in my calendar and who are they with? Create me a Stripe payment link for a new customer. Build me a to-do list for today based on my calendar and, and a list of tasks I need to complete and then structure an email to send to a client to schedule in a meeting for a specific time. Now, if you think about this, having these prompts there preset in buttons makes this pretty much indestructible. So if you're using this internally in your business or you're giving access out to other people for them to use, you can just give them access to these specific conversation starters and they essentially can get the same result every single time building consistency with this AI agent. So right now we can come down and we can add a knowledge base. So maybe you wanna upload files about your specific business and the services that you're offering. For this example, I'm not gonna do that. It's really simple to do. Most of you know what a knowledge base is. It's basically the brain of the bot. It can learn from PDFs, it can learn from documents, it can learn from websites that we add in. We can give it capabilities so it can now browse the website. I think it's trained up to April, 2023. We can give it DALI image generation so we can actually ask it to create us an image. And with these Zapier integrations, we can then get it to send the images via email as well, which is really cool. Think of the possibilities there with graphic design studios. They're now gonna be able to have mood board generator GPTs where they can punch in ideas and it can spit them out a bunch of DALI images based on preset prompts for a specific job that they may be working on. We also have Code Interpreter, which if you saw the dev day, this is nuts. So Code Interpreter lets your GPT run code. When enabled, your GPT can analyze data, work with your files you've uploaded, do maths, and much more. So this is really, really impressive. This is a little bit more advanced and we can definitely go into it in another video. We can see here, we've got our action set up and we're pretty much ready to go. Okay, so we can now test our GPT. So I've actually added free test events into our calendar. So let's see if we can find those events inside of our calendar. So what calls do I have today in my calendar and who are they with? Let's see how it works. What it should be able to do now, yep, is talk to Zapier and start that zap. So great, let's check your Google Calendar for today's calls. To proceed, I'll use the Google Calendar find event action. Once the action completes, please reply to continue. Let's get started. It's now running that action for me. Now what you can do is you can actually turn these settings off inside of your Zapier action. So it can just do it automatically without you having to confirm stuff. But for now, whilst we're testing, let's do it so we have to confirm stuff. Okay, so quickly, I just had to do some troubleshooting. Now, obviously, because this is in beta or even alpha, there is gonna be some lag to it. There's a lot of people trying to build these GPTs right now, so it's a little bit slow. But as you can see, we came over to test Bobby AI and it couldn't actually find my calendar. So what I went to do is I just jumped into actions again and I just remade the action, relinked it back into that prompt, that description with the link there. Um, and it seems to be working perfectly now. So in this new chat, we can now access our bot and we said, what calls do I have today in my calendar and who are they with? 
it went through my calendar and it said you have event one at you have this event test one at time 1 30 to 2 30 with mark wilson which is the co-founder of our agency and then we have event test two at 5 p.m to 6 p.m which is exactly right those are the calls on this specific calendar great so we know we can now find calendar events in our calendar that we've set it for but can we now build a to-do list in our todoist account so let's click that build me a to-do list for today based on my calendar and a list of tasks i need to complete yes these are set up great so it's now found those calendar invites and it's now asking us to build a list of things that we need to get done so i'm just going to punch in some really basic stuff i need to walk the dog now again i'm not saying that this is faster than just going in and creating a to-do list yourself and typing that in manually but as this starts to grow and as we start to get more and more integrations this is going to become a complete holistic assistant for us right now this is in alpha beta stages like this is just early we're just seeing what can be done and where we can push this thing to so i've prepared the first task in to-do list for the test one meeting confirm run that so again, like I said, you can actually go in and you can turn off the need to approve all of these requests and actions. But for this example, I've kept them on. But let's see if it starts to build up this to-do list. So look, I manually had to go through and accept all of these tasks because we had the action set up in that way. But we can see here, we now have those individual items in our to-do list. So the assistant did its job. Right now, annoyingly, because there's so many people using GPT, we're getting limited pretty heavily and I'm gonna have to wait two hours to film the rest of this video. A few moments later. Finally, I'm out of open AI prison and I can now have access to the Bobby AI bot again. I've literally been sat here for like two and a half hours, three hours, waiting to get access again. But luckily I uh, managed to catch up on some work. Okay, so where we left off, we now have this bot populating our to-do list. Now, yes, there is a still a lot more structure that needs to go into this. And like I said, what you really wanna do is when you're setting up your actions, you wanna ensure that this is turned off so that it doesn't constantly ask you to keep accepting every single new input that you put into this to-do list, okay? It's good when you're testing, but once you know it all works, there's just no need for that because it just adds another layer of complexity and it just slows you down and you'd just be faster putting it in yourself. But what we wanna do now is I wanna send an email to my co-founder telling him that this is my to-do list today. Let's see if it can do this for me. So I'm basically just asking if this bot can now send an email to my co-founder, asking him if he has an update on the Calyx Interiors project that is in my to-do list. Now, what we could do is we could actually set up an action to allow us to edit the to-do list as well. Right now, I've only set an action up to say uh, you can create a task, but we can really dive into every single action here and really transform it. So it's just a to-do list bot where we say you, you're going to edit the to-do list, you're going to prioritize you're going to tag whatever it is whatever options we have in zapier currently obviously it is in alpha so i'm not expecting to have all of these systems and all of these apps working 100 percent yet but who knows what's coming in the next couple of weeks okay we can now confirm this action the body we want it to have ai guess a value for this field enable action probably going to want us to reset that again cool so that's all turned on let's confirm that's done we have to complete this video before i get another three hour ban cool so let's prepare my email let's check it out and see how it looks hi mark hope you're doing well I wanted to share my task with today great it shared every single step also could you please provide me an update on the calyx interiors project best regards your name inbox now inside of the action we can change this so our name is liam evans um that's just another field that we need to set but all in all, that looks pretty good. Confirm. I'm happy to send that. Think how easy it is now to be going back to people in your Google account. Or if you're a content creator and you work with a lot of brands, you want to find specific emails from certain people or you want to send a bulk email out to certain people that are in your inbox, this really does change the game. I just want to jump on over to email and make sure it's sent. Cool. So it seems right now these connections are a little bit buggy. It's expected. They're probably getting tons of traffic right now. But we have now successfully sent our email to Mark. So we can see here, it's formatted really badly, but again, this is something that we can work on. Could you please provide an update on the Calyx Interiors project? Best regards. He's probably gonna to respond to me now being like, what the fuck are you on about? But yeah, there you go, that's that. Cool, so we're now sending emails. We're now crossing our to-do list into our emails as well. I wanna see if I can create a Google Calendar event. Now we saw on Dev Day, the OpenAI team running through calendars and checking calendars, and we've already done that today, but let's see if we can actually create a calendar event as well. Now I do already have an action set up called create event. So let me just jump into this here and see if there's anything else that we need to add. Now I wanna set the specific calendar to be my calendar. And then I also want 
So set this to be new team meeting. AI can also guess the attendees. Now one thing in the actions, we can actually name our actions. So what you'll find is the GPT will get a little bit confused if you have too many different actions in there that are doing similar things. If you do have that, you need to name them and identify them so that there you go, this can help GPT distinguish between multiple similar actions. This is gonna help there. Now I'm gonna hit enable action there and ensure that it's turned on. Great, so I've got my create an event set up. So now I want Bobby AI to create a calendar event for me. I've told it that I wanna create a meeting on November the 11th at 11 a.m. for one hour with the following guests slash attendees, myself, Liam.Evans at unorthodox.digital, Mark.Wilson at unorthodox.digital. Let's see if it works. Zapier is obviously working out the fine details with their actions as well as they are in alpha. So we should expect to see this run so much smoother hopefully over the next couple of weeks. Cool, so it's now said that the meeting has been scheduled. We have the calendar event link here. And if I go on over to the calendar, we should be able to see it there. There we go. And perfect, we've got the two guests there, Liam.Evans and Mark.Wilson with a Google Meet link there. So it's just created us that calendar invite, which is exactly what I wanted it to do. Okay, so the bot's done a to-do list for us. It's emailed someone with some questions. It's found calendar events on our calendar and it's also scheduled calendar events on our calendar and added attendees to it. So I now wanna see if I can get Bobby AI to create us a product inside of our Stripe. Create me a product. So there you go. I've just asked Bobby AI to create me a product called AI Consulting that is priced at $2,500 inside of Stripe. Let's see if this works. I really hope eventually we can just automate our entire invoice processing. Cool, so it said that it's completed that. If we now jump into Stripe, I can also see that it has created the AI consulting product. Now, it doesn't look like it's added a price, so that may be something that uh, it's struggling to do right now, but hopefully in the future they can fix that. And like I said, hopefully they can add an invoice feature as well. Um, you know, there's so many different options that we can play around with here. So yeah, look, all in all, I'm pretty excited with what's taken us probably 15 real minutes of actually setting up uh, and what we've achieved. And if you really just put your head to this and think of what you can build over a month time frame or two months time frame whilst working with a company or whilst working inside your own business, the, the opportunities really are endless and I'm extremely excited for these. Right now, they're buggy. Right now, it's slow. Right now, you're gonna get kicked off every 20, 30 minutes. But it is what it is and if you can get as much learning time in now as possible, you're gonna be on the front foot when everyone starts to use these. Great, so you should now see how big of an opportunity these GPTs really are. And if this video doesn't excite you, then I don't think you watched it properly because the options that we now have right at our fingertips are insane. The amount of businesses that are now gonna start adopting this AI technology is ridiculous. And if you do run an AI automation agency, you are gonna be that person to help facilitate that transaction. And you're gonna be able to help them develop and improve these GPTs and the different solutions that you end up building for them. I, for one, am extremely excited and I cannot wait to see what these next six months look like. As long as we're not being taken over by robots and being held at gunpoint by terminators, I'm happy. If we can build GPTs and we can automate processes and we can make our lives easier and I can have an assistant now that I can check in with every single morning and it can give me guidance on what my day looks like based on my calendar and what I need to focus and prioritize on my to-do list, then that is a complete winner for me. But guys, if you are building an AI automation agency, and you did want to join a community of other AI entrepreneurs, then make sure you join the link down below in the description. We run a community called The Network with over 7,000 people inside, but we have a ton of resources, active communities, and masterclasses as well. So if that does sound like something you're interested in, make sure you jump in. What I want to see from you is I want to see what you can think of and what you can go and build. So go and build your GPTs, get creative with it, see what sort of limits you can push it to, and then share what you've built down below or inside of The Network. The next couple of months are going to be crazy with the rollout of the marketplace. We're going to see some insane tools built and I can't wait for it. That is everything for me today. If you do want more GPT tutorials, make sure you subscribe to the channel. But other than that, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.